laparoscopic surgery for GARD, laparoscopic fundal application complete or partial. Gastroesophageal reflux disease, commonly named as GARD. Gastroesophageal reflux disease is most common gastrointestinal disorder. Approximately 25% of the patient with GRD will develop a progressive disease that does not respond to simple medical therapy. Some of these may benefit from an anti-reflux procedure. The indications for uh, GRD surgery is persistent symptoms after 12 weeks of medical therapy, inability to continue medical therapy, Complications of esophageal acid exposure such as stricture, Barrett's esophagus that is a pre-malignant condition and presence of alkaline reflux which is detected on uh, esophageal uh, pH matrix study. Complications are There are, we divide the complications into two. One is the absolute contraindications and relative contraindication. In absolute contraindications, those are common with other surgeries like patient's inability to tolerate general anesthesia, incorrectable coagulopathy, and the relative complications, uh, relative contraindications are previous upper abdominal surgery, severe morbid obesity with body mass index more than 35, and esophageal motility disorders. The tests which should be done prior to surgery are ogidoscopy with biopsy, esophageal manometry. These are the most important studies and optionally you can do 24 hours pH metry of uh, acid medications. This is not required if patient has typical history of a gastroesophageal uh, reflux and some patients may require barium esophagogram and gastric emptying time test. The instrumentation required for this particular surgery are 30 degree rigid laparoscope most probably bariatric length laparoscope is preferred and standard laparoscopic ports minimum 10 mm one uh, port is required 5 mm three ports are required and 5 mm Nathanson's retractor then 5 mm two bobble forceps 5 mm harmonic scalpel 5 mm ligature and if we are not using a ligature and harmonic, then you require a hook forceps and the uh, scissors and the suction cannulation is required. And two zero bond sutures, umbilical tape. Here you can use the drain also or police catheter also and free Teflon pledges if it is available which is optional and endoscope intraop for en intraop endoscopy if required. The operation room setup is a leg splitting position with reverse tender bunk position. Surgeon stand in between the legs of the patient, camera person on the left side and the first assistant on the right side of the surgeon. Steps of surgery. Division of gastrohepatic ligament, then pleural dissection, then creation of a window posterior to esophagus. Next step is dissection around lower esophagus. After that, posterior mediastinal dissection. The division of short gastric vessels, then pleural suturing, 
then creation and suturing of a wrap of stomach, then endoscopy, intraop, optional, <coughs> and then hemostasis that needs to be achieved after completion of the surgery. Here we start with the laparoscopic fundoplication, 30 360 degree wrap that is a floppy nissens. The same procedures are applied for partial fundoplication as well. So first part is same in both the operations. The first port is taken just below the ziffy sternum. First 5 mm trocar is put and then after removal of this trocar, you can put a Nathan sensor retractor which can go easily through that to the openings what we have corrected or created. The Nathan sensor retractor should be gently put to retract the left lobe of liver so that you can visualize the uh, both the crura and here you can appreciate the herniation. So hernia is there sliding hernia you can see the stomach is going into the chest then the first hand instrument trocar is put in the midline approximately 15 centimeter below the uh, Nathanson's retractor then the right side trocar is put in the midline in the sternoclitis in the mid, midpoint of the sternum the line drawn down just below the costal cartilage you can put a 5 mm trocar and the lateral trocar is put in the anterior axillary line just below the costal margin <coughs> Now, to this lateral port, we put a, a bowel grasper and we grasp the uh, stomach at around near to the G junction and give the traction towards the spleen so that the gastrohepatic ligament, which is a pars placida part, is visualized properly and that can be grasped and cut with the help of a harmonic scalpel. Here you can use scissors or uh, scissors with a monopolar current or a hook also. But I prefer harmonic scalpel. And after that, you can see here the only layer of the peritoneum is cut over the diaphragm. We have asked the assistant to pull this uh, stomach down now towards the umbilicus and then only peritoneal incision is taken over the, uh, near the crura anteriorly and then laterally. Then you will visualize the white glistening structure which is a hernia sac part and covering over the uh, left crura. Now this particular white glistening part is a hernia sac. So that need to be dissected and pushed away and dissected away from the esophagus as well as the left crust. So with the help of a harmonic shear and a left hand ball forceps you can dissect and with the jaw of harmonic scalpel you can dissect further And the esophagus is pushed down here while taking an incision over this particular sac 
you need to understand the anatomy the anterior vagus is lying just beneath it so you need to be very specific you need to understand the structures what you are cutting with the help of a harmonic so gently you have to grab the structure and then cut it with the harmonic shear while doing the crural dissection you always need to understand you should keep the peritoneal lining above this crura intact so that you should not bear the muscles here you can see the anterior vagus and now you are taking this attachment and the sac is pushed above and esophagus is separated anteriorly now the crural dissection you can see here the peritoneal reflection or the crura right cross so you are cutting with the help of a harmonic simultaneously you can see they achieve the hemostasis and then after taking an incision over the peritoneal reflection then you can put a left hand forceps and just slide it down and you can dissect this first peritoneum and then the pleura right side pleura away and the esophagus is separated from its attachment now you can see here the right pleura ask the assistant to pull the stomach down and dissection is carried out around the lower esophagus the attachment of pleura is taken care of with the help of a harmonic and the bowel forceps you need to just separate it out with the help of jaws of harmonic and the attachments are taken care of with harmonic shear so the section is carried into the media stadium <coughs> on right side whatever you are cutting you have to be very sure of that particular structure and then only you can cut it here you can see we are going a uh, forming a tunnel <coughs> all flimsy attachments are taken care of with the help of a harmonic scalpel so a left hand instrument you can see it is lying over the right pleura <coughs> now ask the assistant to pull the stomach towards the right side so that you can see there is a traction over the left pleural attachments now these attachments should be taken care of with the help of a harmonic <clears throat> so some of fundus attachments are taken care of while doing so while doing so you should see that you should not be injuring any injury to the spleen because spleen is lying just lateral to it So bit by bit you have to take all these attachments so 
you have to push the stomach down then the dissection is carried out till the angle of his <coughs> now here you can see the angle of his so small attachments are there that need to be taken care of Now the posterior window is created between the esophagus and the pleura below. Now you have to put the left hand instrument into just below the posterior vagus which is visualized here very nicely and then with the help of a harmonic and the left hand instrument you can see here a flimsy layer which is taken care of with a harmonic scalpel and the window is created and widened further dissection is carried out through this window if possible or otherwise you can do it later on after taking the short gastric vessels so the section around crura you see here we are keeping one layer of a peritoneum above the crural muscles then the posterior mediastinal dissection is carried out before that we should put a umbilical tape at the g junction exactly so that with the help of this umbilical tape which is tied at the level of a G junction you can maneuver the esophagus and you can give traction to the esophagus so that you should uh, it will be beneficial for doing posterior mediastinal dissection and dissection around the lower third of a esophagus so umbilical tape is tied at G junction and the right hand assistant is asked to put a bowel forceps to catch hold of this particular umbilical tape and he can maneuver while you are doing the uh, posterior mediastinal dissection so assistant is asked to catch hold of this umbilical tape which is tied exactly at G junction now the posterior mediastinal dissection is carried out Here again, I prefer always a harmonic scalpel, which is always beneficial for uh, creating a plane. And these are few attachments which are taken care of with harmonic scalpel. posterior mediastinal dissection is carried out while doing so you have to catch hold of the structure first dissect it and then cut with harmonic scalpel so that you should know what structure you are dealing with and then the dissection is carried further and here you can realize there is a aorta and all the attachments between the esophagus and aorta need to be taken care of need to be cut so 
almost lower esophagus up to 7 to 8 centimeters that needs to be dissected like this. You can see here very well the aorta and the attachments of aorta to the posterior esophagus that need to cut. And now ask the assistant to give traction towards the opposite side that is towards the right hand of the surgeon or to right out of the patient and the dissection is carried out around the left truss of the diaphragm. Now here you can see the peritoneal lining attached to the esophagus, lower esophagus that needs to be taken care of. You have to be very gentle while doing this dissection. Traction and counter traction is the key to go in between the uh, structures. This is how the attachments are taken care of without making the pleura bare and muscles are exposed. So these attachments are cut with the help of a harmonic scalpel. Small bites of harmonic scalpel are always taken. You should not catch hold of a with the whole uh, shear. So there are few vessels directly coming from the aorta to the esophagus here. So that need to be taken care of. Otherwise, it becomes very oozy in this area. While doing this dissection, you should know the direction of the vagus. As the uh, esophagus is pulled laterally on the right side, the esophagus, uh, the vagus is coming towards the towards midline. So you need to be very specific. You should see the course of a vagus and above is the pericardium and in between the pericardium and the esophagus you need to dissect. Now here you can see the vagus, anterior vagus and we have to dissect above the esophagus and below the pericardium above. You can see here the sac and the fibers are cut bit by bit. You can see here the vagus very prominently and you have to just dissect with the help of a shear just pushing away the structures you can create a plane. white glistening structure anteriorly is a pericardium you can see the heartbeats and slowly and steadily you need to carry out the dissection now on the left side you can see here the left side pleura is densely attached to the esophagus lower part that need to be dissected and pushed away traction and counter traction is the key to go in between the to create a plane and you can see here the left side pleural reflection and that needs to be taken care of
So this section is carried out further. And the pleura is pushed laterally away from the esophagus. Now here you can see the posterior vagus and anterior vagus and the dissected part of the lower esophagus you can see here pleura there is a small rent which is uh, which has happened while doing dissection on the right side so identification of both vagus is a posterior vagus and this is the anterior vagus you can see it's a course into the mediastinum going laterally and then you can measure the dissected esophagus how much you are dissected so you can see here below the diaphragm you are getting the esophagus almost six centimeters below the pleura you can put a surgical tape or otherwise you can measure with the help of umbilical tape also or even with the help of a thread also you can measure that so here we are putting a sterile surgical ruler and you can see here it is G junction at exactly at 6 centimeters so 6 centimeters of lower esophagus is dissected now the dissection is almost complete the surgical ruler is taken out Now the short gastric vessels are there that need to be cut, sealed and cut. At the lower level of the spleen, you can catch hold of, uh, at the same level, you can catch hold of the stomach and division of short gastric is carried out at this level. Here, like pars placida, at this particular junction, you can get this peritoneum, uh, this uh, lesser sac can be opened very easily here. The preferred instrument for division of short gastric, I always use ligature, but some surgeons they prefer a harmonic scalpel also, or otherwise you can use bipolar with uh, scissors. But I feel ligature is more secure and you can dissect it as well as you can seal and cut the structure with the help of a ligation. So here we have made a rent and opened the laser sac and here you can see very well the laser sac and the dissection is carried further. See to it that the, we have to achieve a proper hemostasis while doing the division of short gastrics. You can ask your assistant to put a forceps in this divided portion and then fold it laterally so that you can dissect in the plane. You should always see the border of the stomach. See to it that you are not injuring the stomach. Or stomach wall otherwise you will get perforation in the post-operative period so while doing this division of short gastrics you should see for the hemostasis as well as the border of the stomach
Now ask your assistant to put the uh, forceps and pull the structures laterally so that you can see the short gastric vessels properly and then you can seal and cut it with the help of a ligature. So here are some short gastric vessels. You can see down the pancreas. The pancreas is very well visualized here. And you are going towards the spleen now. The, the last short gastric or first short gastric is always very short. And while taking the short gastric, there is a high chance that you can injure the uh, spleen and that will lead to bleeding at this point. So you need to be very specific. And all these attachments of the fundus are taken care of. You should see the pancreas like this and both the crust of the diaphragm should be visualized from this end and that will be your complete dissection. So here you can very well visualize both the crust and all attachments are taken care of. Now this dissection is complete. Now you should see whether your wrap is, is coming through this window and the, you are getting the wrap completely. Otherwise you need to dissect further. Now stomach wrap is taken through this posterior window. And the shoe shine maneuver you can do here. That is, that shows that the stomach is coming very easily. And then the drop test, where you should drop the stomach part, the wrap of the stomach, and take out all the instruments and see to it that it is not going back completely. So, so you can see here it is not going back. So that means our dissection is complete. And Now we will proceed further for the rural suture. Here we are using 2-0 if you want suture. You can use proline 2 zero sutures also. But this if you want suture is a polyester suture, is a non-absorbable and easy to handle. And the knotting capacity is also very good. While taking this fluorosuture, you need to see for the entry and exit point of your needle because while you are entering from the pleura, the aorta is lying just below it. There is a high chance that you can injure aorta. So the entry and exit point you should see always. And here there is some bleeding at this particular point. So it is taken care of with the help of a bipolar forceps. Also while taking the needle through the right crust, you should uh, should not injure the caudate lobe of the liver. So it needs to be protected with the help of a left side bowel grasper. And the knot is tied. The first suture is always, I prefer to take a figure of eight suture. Like this.
the picture is tied. Now the second picture is taken just above that around 0.5 centimeters above the first suture and this is a simple suture you can here take again a figure of eight suture but I prefer to go for the simple suture. By time not you may need a uh, help of our system to step the suture while taking a knot over it like this and then you can tie the third knot so that it should not slip. So here still some gap is there but we will take these suture after taking the wrap in this particular case because if you take it very tightly then there is chance of dysphagia in the post of early post of period. So to avoid that we will take it afterwards. Even though the gap is more you can very well approximate the suture uh, here with another suture but we will do that afterwards after taking the wrap so here we will take the wrap first ask the assistant to catch hold of the umbilical tape and then take the stomach wrap again While taking this, the posterior uh, wall of this stomach should lie posteriorly, you should see that, otherwise there is a twisting of the wrap, so you need to avoid that and then you can start suturing. So three switches will usually take and the wrap size is approximately two and a half to three centimeters. The 360 degree license wrap is created and sutured like this. And it's a quite loose wrap. Second suture is taken around 0.5 centimeter to 0.8 centimeter below the first suture. Uh, 
and while taking second suture, I'm taking a bite to the esophagus so that this wrap should not slip. While taking through the esophagus, you should see that we should not injure the anterior vagus. Second suture is taken. And the third suture is taken just below that. Again, 0.5 to 0.8 centimeter below the second suture. And while taking these sutures, you should always see that it is not very tight around the OG uh, junction. Now you can see here the tape which is there at OG junction level which is buried inside this particular knot. So that is again you are confirmed that you are at the level of the G junction and not on the stomach. So you can see here the knot is approximately 2.5 centimeters Then we again took here the plural suture and approximate the plura so that you know the part of the esophagus is still below the plural opening. Here again we are tying the knot, so I take tying the knot, you can take help of your assistant, they are asked to step this knot. Just below the caudate lobe here is the inferior vena cava. So while taking all the sutures on the right cross also, you should always aware of the anatomy and you should not injure the inferior vena cava. While in dissection also, you should be very careful and also while suturing or taking sutures also, you need to be very careful. So depth of the suture, you should always aware of and you should always keep a layer of a peritoneum over the crust so that the fibers are not pulled away or separated and you can see here the wrap and the umbilical tape is is lost behind that so here now we are fixing the wrap to the crura we are fixing the wrap at two places first is near the upper end of the wrap
this suture is taken just to uh, to avoid the migration of the wrap into the chest in a post operative period so it is fixed at two places so we have kept the needles near the spleen you should always keep a count of the needles which are there inside and you should take out all these needles after the completion of the procedure so now again we are catch it hold of this umbilical tape so that it is becomes easy to take a suture on the posterior aspect of the wrap and with the crura like this so wrap is almost fixed to the crura so there is less chance that it will again migrate into the chest For the suturing of the crura, you can take the proline uh, suture as well as the barb sutures which are available right now. We are using, started using now the barb sutures, non-absorbable barb sutures to uh, approximate the crura. But for the wrap, we are using the ethibon sutures with, because of its ease of maneuverability and uh, the color is also it can be identified very easily now the procedure is almost complete the umbilical tape is cut and the umbilical tape and all these needles which are there inside are taken out and then the Nathanson's retractor is is taken out. So all the needles, three, four needles, they are taken out. And then the Nathanson's retractor after seeing is there any hemostasis or their bleeding you can take care of and you can do uh, endoscopy here to see you can see here one transfer is going around the esophagus so it is almost complete now the Nathanson's retractor is released and taken out while taking it out you should be always visualize So that it is taken under it's taken out under vision now we will see the partial wrap the first procedure is almost same the wrap is taken after creating the posterior window and taken care of short gastric vessels so wrap is taken like this after shoe shine maneuver and now you can see here the anterior vagus And then it is sutured on the lateral wall. So while taking sutures, you need to be very cautious because you should not take a through and through suture. So you have to take only serosal part or only muscular part of the esophagus. Needle should not go through and through and the wrap is taken and wrap is sutured at three places on one side three places on other side The choice of procedure between uh, Nissen's fundoplication and uh, the two-phase fundoplication in uh, our practice is decided upon 
by esophageal manometry study. If there is any non-specific motility disorder, then in those patients, we usually prefer uh, to do a partial fundoplication because it has been observed that in the immediate post-operative period, if you have done the complete 360 degree wrap, then these patients present with dysphagia, early dysphagia in early post-operative period. So to avoid that, we always prefer to do a partial fundoplication in cases where you see the uh, inefficient motility disorder on manometry study. So manometry study is must in every GRD patient. You always see for the motility disorder. If it is not there, then only you should proceed. pH metric study is uh, optional. If you are not confirm of the diagnosis of GRD, then you can go ahead and do the uh, uh, pH metric study or impedance study. But if the anatomical herniation and anatomical defect is obvious, then there is no necessity to do a pH metric study and you can go ahead directly for after manometry study you can directly go for the fundoplication. So the suture is two sutures are taken on right side now on the left side. While taking sutures you see too is that yeah, all these switches are above the level of the G junction. Approximately three sutures are taken on either side. While going through the esophagus, you should see to it that you are not going through and through. So you have to take only a muscle part in the needle. And the third suture is taken exactly at the level of a angle of a hinge. And you can see very well the anterior wall of a esophagus. So 
So now the sutureg is complete on both the sides. Now the third suture it is remaining. It is taken. While taking the suture, you should see that you should not injure the anterior vagus. We have taken the suture just lateral to the vagus nerve. And again, here also we do fix the uh, the wrap to the tura with the help of the sutures on the posterior aspect of the wrap. So now this is the last suture, and then this wrap is fixed, and ask assistant to pull the umbilical tape laterally. So that you can take a suture from the posterior wall of the wrap. And this is fixed to the cura. So wrap is fixed to the cura so that it will not migrate in the post-operative period. The wrap is fixed and then the umbilical tape is cut. And take an out. This was the complete removal of umbilical tape. And then the mesenchymal retractor is taken out. The uh, tips and pitfalls for this particular operation are: while dividing the gastrohepatic ligament, you should look for always an aberrant left hepatic artery. The fundus may lie just posterior to the left truss and can be perforated with the blunt dissection of the posterior window. So only dissect under clear vision and always know what you are dividing or dissecting. Care must be taken while suturing the right press and identify the uh, and avoid the damage to the inferior vena cava. And caution should be used while suturing the crura, the dissecting the hiatus as the aorta is just inferior and there are reports of aortic injury. While dividing the short gastries, you should take care of the spleen injury. And the post-operative care. The liquids on recovery from the anesthesia, then maintain on the liquid diet for one to two weeks. Thereafter, you can put the patient on the soft food and go on the normal food bar in four to six weeks and discharge the patient on first or second post-operative day. And we do uh, do the endoscopy in the immediate post-operative period after one and a half months. The complications for this said operations are 
rap herniation, 1.3% incidence is there. The pneumothorax is 1% incidence. The perforation is 0.8% incidence is there. Hemorrhage is 0.8%. Pneumonia in 0.6% of the patients. Abscess 0.3% of the patients. Tocarcite hernia is 0.2% incidence is there. The pulmonary embolus is 0.2%. Splenectomy 0.1%. And myocardial infarction in 0.1% of the patients. Thanks for watching with the operations. Thank you very much.